Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. The crisis in the Rajasthan Congress continues to simmer and brew. Sachin Pilot, the rebel Congress leader, has now gone to court. Harish Salve and Mukul Rohtagi are his lawyers. He's contesting the disqualification, the proposed disqualification of him and other rebel Congress MLAs. The idea, of course, is that if it should come to a trust vote on the floor of the House, the rebel MLAs' trust vote should not count at all. But the larger question is the fate of the Congress, what it says about the Congress leadership. Why are so many people leaving the Congress? Jyotiraditya Sindhya was among them. We have today on the program Pradyut Manekya Debarna, who has spoken earlier on the Mojo story about what made him leave, what made him leave the Congress. He has a write-up in the Indian Express today talking about how ambition is not a bad word. Why is everybody judging Sachin Pilot for his ambition? Pradyut joins us uh, from Tripura. Pradyut, I'm glad you made the point because why are we acting as if politics is not also about winning elections? It has to be about a certain degree of hunger. As someone who's been with the Congress but left, again out of frustration with the party structures and systems and partly the leadership, what do you make of the Sachin Pilot saga? No, I think... Uh, uh... To be very uh, honest here, Bartha, uh, ambition, there's nothing wrong in ambition. There is something yeah. called world face. Yeah. If you have a world face, then there is a bit of a problem. Sachin has said that he doesn't want to leave the Congress. He's, he's made it very clear that he doesn't want to definitely join the BJP. He's a young man who's worked very hard. He was given an assurance that his time will come. We all know for the last two years, Sachin and Bhelo Ji have had a lot of problems. Yeah. Now, the biggest problem I see here is that the Congress party had two years, two and a half years, and especially the last one year, to readdress this program, uh, problem and uh, make things all right between them. Yeah. The Congress party has not done it. And this is so last moment. I think people have snapped. Relationships have gone to a point of no return. And uh, sadly, in this, uh, Sachin is not a gainer. I don't think so. But neither is Gehlot. I think the only gainer here will be the perception that the Congress party does not encourage his young, uh, youngsters to uh, uh, mm -hmm. become leaders. And BJP will succeed in milking this opportunity. Now, uh, one of the counter arguments from those who are with Gehlot and opposed to Sachin uh, has been to say mm -hmm. uh, that Sachin has to earn his spurs, that many young Congress people were given places in the Manmohan Singh cabinet, Sindhya Pilot, Milan Diora were among them, that Gehlot mm -hmm. is the one who controls the maximum number of MLAs. And if Sachin really had uh, the basis uh, to want to lead the party in the polls, which is what he's told me he wants to do in the state polls, then why doesn't he have the MLAs? Uh, did uh, did uh, Rosaya have more MLAs than Jagan after YSR's death? Uh, we all know that Himanta Biswa Sarma had more MLAs than Tarun Gogoi. Yeah. When did uh, we all know that uh, there was a Captain Amrinder Singh uh, almost threatened to leave the party if he wasn't announced as the next uh, uh, chief ministerial candidate? So yeah. it has never been, it has never been in the Congress. I mean, I've been in Congress for so long. I know it. it's never been about who has more MLAs. It is about what the high command decides. Uh, and if the high command has decided to back a certain uh, individual, then Jagan has to uh, uh, take it or leave it. Same thing happened with Himanto. Uh, it was only in the case of Captain Saab where uh, they had no other option. So yeah. it's never about the MLAs. So let's not have two sets of arguments, one for Sachin and one for Jagan or one for uh, Rosaya and one for Himanta Biswa Sarma. We have to be very clear. Uh, it's what the high command decides in the Congress party. So talk a little bit about your own experience. You left, but you left to form your own regional outfit. And that's something you've argued, even with your cousin Jyotiraditya Sindhya. I remember you're telling me on this program, on this platform, that you wish he hadn't joined the BJP. You wish he'd formed his own party. Sachin might well be on his way uh, to doing that. Yet there are those who say, uh, and Gehlot made the swipe at him that good looks and good English doesn't mm -hmm. make a politician. The suggestion is that all of you of a certain generation are these mm -hmm. uh, kind of Khan market politicians. You know, you're this English speaking, mm -hmm. urbane, suave, uh, elite. You're not the Zameen ke neta. How would you respond to that narrative that you have all been painted in in some ways? No, no, I, I completely agree with uh, uh, Gehlot ji that uh, good looks uh, being connected to Delhi uh, media people mm -hmm. and speaking good English uh, does not make you a good politician. It could be about Rahul Gandhi as well. I mean, why only us? Mm. Second thing, 
ये क्या जमीन से जुड़े हुए बात कर रहे हैं आई हैव लुक एट मी माई एजुकेशन इज इन दॉर्थ ईस्ट आई लिव ऑल माई लाइफ इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट आई फॉट आई डोट इवन हैव एन एड्रेस इन डेली आई कम वंस इन वट to uh, once in 6 months 8 months to delhi mm. i don't have any delhi uh, so called latins media with even arnab goes this is sounding like almost like uh, arnab goes swami in fact gelo ji but the fact is that uh, please <laughs> you're saying, look, please look you're at, saying you're uh, saying gelo ji sort of dig at elitism and the delhi the delhi coterie is uh, sounding like our, i mean uh, very soon uh, barka you would be in the same problem with uh, gelo ji because you speak good english but my point is <laughs> that uh, uh, what what we, uh, we, he has to also look at is how uh, rahul gandhi when he resigned as a congress president in his open letter he spoke openly about two chief ministers who tried to push their sons in yeah who uh, definitely are khan market crowd who are definitely uh, very well off who definitely speak very good english i'm not sure how good they look i haven't met them but uh, they are definitely uh, exactly like what uh, ghelo ji is not so uh, mm. this is hypocrisy everybody knows that uh, the real problem here is that sachin wants to be the chief minister he wants to assert his uh, uh, power in rajasthan and mm. gelo ji is reluctant it is mm. not about kiski shamta zyada hai it is about a turf war between two people one who is not willing to give up and one who is uh, trying to get his uh, uh, piece of the pie one of the more interesting comments you made and it you almost slipped it through the cracks was to say that what mr gehlot said about sachin pilot could be the description of mr gandhi as well mm-hmm. absolutely so uh, i mean as i said he sounds like arnab goswami these days i mean it is not a disqualification it is in your genes if you were born the way you were You, if you speak good english he we speak good hindi hum bhi main north east se aata hu main acha hindi bolta hu iska ye matlab hai ki main zameen se juda hu jo acha hindi bolta hai wo zameen se juda hai wo wo delhi mein reh nahi sakta kya khan market ja nahi sakta kya ye kya baat kar rahe ho log see this is all uh, this is all uh, desperation from both ends but gelo ji has shown that a man who is in his 70s will still hold on to his power because this power is which cannot be taken so easily this is a turf war well, and make don't make it about let's young make the versus, counter yeah. no but let's make it the counter argument in politics numbers speaks right like we say the congress can't just be giving these abstract notions it has to learn how to win elections similarly mm-hmm. if sachin made a bid uh, bid for his place in the state either he needed to show the numbers that's one argument or he needed to leave this in between thing do you think it's hurting him i think it's definitely hurting him but i think it's hurting the congress more because mm. i think this is uh, because i mean in which state does a deputy chief minister and now supposedly the chief minister get a sedition notice so it's definitely hurting him mm. i think also that he's been pushed to a wall but the job of the congress party the high command or the structure is not to take the side of one individual over another it is to reconcile two individuals it is so apparent now that the rahul gandhi is not taking day to day interest in the congress party the mm-hmm. the party is obviously siding with someone who is a familiar old guard face that's because uh, they've been uh, uh, the old structure is very comfortable with gelo ji and uh, maybe sachin uh, did not work enough amongst the older guard was more close to rahul gandhi and now rahul gandhi uh, has uh, has not taken any interest in uh, whether it was me leaving whether it was uh, ashok tawar leaving whether it was jyotiraditya leaving whether it was priyanka chaturvedi leaving or it's me or anyone for that matter he is no longer the congress president and he feels that it's not his responsibility anymore so let me push you on that you say that this shows a lack of interest from rahul gandhi there is another theory mm-hmm. uh, there is another theory that it suits rahul gandhi to have everybody his age actually leave because then the leadership question is settled once and for all nobody then looks at the party and says hey why not sindhya why not sachin why not whoever i mean it could be anybody right but what happens mm-hmm. is if there are a lot of other 30 somethings and 40 somethings around right uh, there is a tendency to say that there are leaders beyond rahul gandhi and now that question if sachin does leave neatly seems to have been settled yeah well i guess it's then if that is a theory and uh, that's it's a just theory, a theory I, what I'm do you not, think uh, yeah. what do you think what do you think because you called it a lack of interest by rahul gandhi yeah i think he's uh, he's frustrated his open letter actually blamed uh, two gentlemen who've actually successfully managed to edge out uh, jyotiraditya sindhya and now uh, sachin if this happens mm-hmm. so uh, i think uh, even if his uh, i was towards uh, the senior lot 
the uh, it's uh, it's eventually the senior lot don't have much in life to achieve so they happy didn't, they content. but he didn't even pick up the phone and call sachin we know that priyanka gandhi made the call even with you the same thing happened right i think what you told me was you kept trying to meet rahul gandhi and you couldn't no try to call him but uh, he was not in india he could call you there's whatsapp calls everywhere i know you could call why don't you tell him that next time no i'm saying why do you <laughs> why do you think it's a lack of i think interest? that i think i think that i think uh, I, you're I almost suggesting theory, you're almost suggesting was, that the old guard has superseded rahul's decision making i am saying to you that rahul gandhi abso- you're saying absolutely. that absolutely i mean i think i'm saying it i said it before it happened before the elections in his open letter he has said he tried to give tickets to people who were deserving eventually mm. the chief minister senior leaders were only interested in getting their children elected mm. and uh, let's be very honest uh, out of the 54 seats in madhya pradesh and in rajasthan congress got only one seat and lo behold it was kamal nath san so uh, it's very clear uh, that rahul gandhi at, he resigned because he felt that he was not given enough uh, support and uh, his letter clearly says that support didn't come from one part of the party so you He's do not really mentioned it i don't have to okay i remember his letter but you do not blame rahul or even his sister for no i, I of course of blame offense. rahul i of course blame rahul he should have stood by us i'm not going to mince my words he should take responsibility if he got people like me or uh, i'm from the northeast i had no godfathers in delhi yeah he gave me the opportunity and i'm very happy for that and we and and and, and i personally love him i'm still in touch with him. but the fact is that uh, he should have uh, uh, once he gives his commitment or once he stands by his team he should have stood by us uh, believe me there are other leaders who who he is committed to who are still waiting on the wings uh, and uh, if uh, he becomes indifferent to the same people they will uh, leave they will not hate him we all uh, are fond of him but we have to also realize that we have our own ground situation to look at and not everyone will leave the congress and join the bjp a lot of people will leave and create their own platform because bjp is equally unacceptable in this country today i mean right now they have uh, mr modi has uh, the kind of popularity that any political leader would envy so i don't know what you mean by saying the bjp is unacceptable come to the, Maybe, come to come to come to the indigenous regions of tripura and we'll show you who's more no no i know i i know there are variations depending on where you travel but mm. i'm just making a larger political point that the congress can ill afford uh, these kind of exits at this point uh, you said that many more people may leave give us a sense of who you think might be next i think uh, a lot of uh, the people from the younger guard are frustrated I, i i can't take names because it would be unfair on my part to take names mm-hmm. uh, i can give you an indication uh, uh, there are a lot of people from uh, mumbai who are unhappy i can give you an indication a lot of people from up are unhappy so we're talking I about milinder milinder and jitin prasad i i don't know them i haven't heard of them this is the first time <laughs> but what i'll tell you is that in manipur uh, this is maybe it could be something yeah. you could uh, probe yeah in manipur uh, the recent rajya sabha election the congress actually went against his uh, uh, whip and voted for a bjp mp and nothing has happened no charges have been made no disqualification i mean the the attack against sachin is far i mean far more graver than what's happened in manipur and uh, from what i get in the next 8 to 10 days there's going to be huge resistance from the manipur congress to the bjp i think the congress should also realize that uh, Uh, maybe sachin is not a rebel as it's been made out and there are other problems in different parts of india yeah. they should look into that as well finally what advice would you have for the congress how would you describe the state of play in the congress today you are urged people like manish shankar ayer uh, you reminded them that there there was a time mm. in their lives that they too walked out of the congress manish shankar ayer joined hands uh, with the with mamta banerjee right and so you have when she was a part of nda when she was a part of nda so yeah. let's be very clear Uh, he left the party in the 90s as well so yeah and then she becomes part of nda later i think that's that's how i yeah. remember my history and then no, no, she, when she she was a part they share the same see his, his entire point uh, mani shankar ayer uh, i have a lot of respect for him he's an educated man he was an extremely good oil minister uh, unceremoniously taken out because of the iran gas pipeline deal we all know for what reason mm-hmm. mani shankar ayer tries to te- tell us about ideology uh, Congress party uh, and Manish Shankar is very famous for removing Savarkar's portrait from uh, the jail in uh, Andaman Nicobar. My point is that Manish Shankar Iyer should be re- uh, told that Congress party is in alliance with a partner in uh, Maharashtra 
which idealizes manish uh, uh, veer savarkar savarkar yeah they should not be preaching and and my last point is that the congress working committee is one of the oldest decision making bodies in the country the problem lies that the congress working committee is a nominated body and everyone who is there right now wants status quo their best years are behind them they don't have any base in their backyard so i would suggest that the congress party gets this act right if we want to get rahul gandhi back wonderful get him back make him the president as uh, well wishers we know who to talk to in the congress even if tomorrow there's a future alliance we know who to talk to but right now there are too many power centers there are too many gossip mongers and the party is headed nowhere the congress working committee has to be reshuffled younger people need to be brought in people who are intelligent salman khurshid is not young but he is of he is of a certain value jairam ramesh people like them also need to be brought in and we need good people who are combative who have a certain amount of stamina cwc so, looks like a a, a monolithic body Uh, and also unelected but i do want to pick up before we close on the point you made about the congress government in maharashtra i think the argument you're making is that the congress can no longer define uh, its ideology as distinct from the bjp after its alliance in maharashtra and therefore that ideological purity that manishankar ayer once believed set it apart from the bjp you're arguing no longer exists or are you arguing no, that the country or are you arguing that the country has pivoted right which no, one I of the arguments are you making No, no. I actually, since I'm a student of history, I'll say that there is a lot of hypocrisy. I was in politics for 19 years. I've seen hypocrisy, and let me tell you, hypocrisy has always existed in all political parties. Whether it was Indira Gandhi taking the support of the communists or uh, RSS backing Indira Gandhi during RSS, Indira Gandhi actually splitting her own father's party and uh, creating Congress Indira. whether it was uh, uh, us tying hands with the communists in 2004 while we were fighting them in west bengal and kerala mm-hmm. so political hypocrisy has always been there uh, we should not uh, try to preach and say that this is changed now now coming back to maharashtra i think that uh, uh, the the we have no moral right today to question about the pdp and bjp alliance in jammu and kashmir when we have done the same i am not saying udav ji is a bad leader i think he's a wonderful leader i think he's probably done a wonderful job i know aditya they're doing a great job but the point is mani shankar ayers of yeah. the world have no right to preach they have to just look back at what they did themselves uh, and uh, you will find a host of other stories how uh, even bjp and communists were working together under vp singh so i yeah. think uh, politics is all about hypocrisy let's not fool the general public of india i think uh, they are a, a lot more smarter than they were a few decades ago well i wish candid voice like yours had at least got a hearing within uh, the congress platform but uh, as they say sala vi such as life uh, thank you pradyut we'll be in touch uh, i know what's happening in the east uh, of the country is also something to watch out for and you've given us a good lead on that manipur story so we'll look out for that one thank you very much yeah and east okay. east is not only about china so it's 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 more than that i did not mean china when i said that thank you so much i know that thank you so much for speaking take care barka always lovely and pleasure to talk to you bye bye thank you thanks